you might have often heard the term ACL. One of the places you might hear it is if you're a sports fan, someone blew their ACL. Yikes. That means at least like six months on the disabled list, by the way. But the ACL that we are referring to here is called the access control list. It's pretty much a universal security principle, and we're going to discuss it in this nugget and make sure we can take advantage of it. One of the awesome things about the access control list is it can really help us with our defense in depth strategy because there's so many places where we can set one up. See this router two here that lives outside of our firewall? We can set up an access control list on this router dictating what traffic we want coming in and what traffic we want coming out from the internet, of course, to our private network. On the firewall, we'll build access control lists to do the same. We can build them on the switch here in the DMZ. We can put access control lists on this router and on these switches. The access control lists can be at layer three, in which we call them router access control lists or network access control lists. And then inside of our VLANs, we can do VLAN-based access control lists, or my favorite way to say it, VACLs. An access control list is an ordered number of statements about what traffic that you're going to permit or deny. The statement order is important because access control lists are processed in order from the top down, and when there's a matching conditions, the permit or deny is executed, and then no further statements in the list are processed. Something else that's pretty interesting about access control lists is they tend to end with something that we call the implicit deny all. And what this says is, hey, sorry, your traffic didn't match one of the entries that the network administrator set up, and therefore your traffic is going to be denied. Let's have some fun with an access control list and let's do it in the cloud. Here I am logged into Amazon Web Services and if we go under networking and content delivery, we can access my virtual private cloud that I set up inside of Amazon Web Services. This is my virtual network in the cloud. And if we come down under security, notice there's an area for network access control lists. So if I look in here, I can see I've got some network access control lists set up. Let's click on this one that I named uh, for the VPC, Sites CBT. Let's click on this and notice that I can see the subnets that are associated with this network access control list. So the subnet that I associated this with is AWS Cert Hub. That's because I've got a web server in that subnet for my little AWS Cert Hub site. So if I look at the inbound rules for this network access control list, we can see that we're allowing absolutely everything. And then look at this, Amazon decides to show us that implicit deny all that's going to kick in after these lines are processed. For the outbound rules, same thing. Everything is allowed outbound out of this subnet. And then there's an implicit deny all. So notice what's happening with the default rule set absolutely all traffic is permitted in and out. This is what we call a permissive default approach to the network access control list. So let's try and access a resource that is inside of that subnet and I've got the AWS certHub.com website inside of that subnet on a web server and look at that, we can get to it just fine. All right, well, let's manipulate the access control list and see if things change. For inbound rules, I'll change it and I'll say, we're only gonna allow SSH traffic inbound, for example. So I'll make that change, save that access control list. We're gonna come over here and refresh our web page. Yes, indeed, because we are trying to reach the website now in that public subnet up there in the cloud using HTTP and SSH is the only thing that's allowed inbound, we just killed our website. So we better go back over here and we better edit this access control list once again and we better permit HTTP as the 
inbound protocol. And something else that I want to do, because I will have portions of that website that are secure, I'm going to add another rule and let's do 110 as the rule number. And I'm going to add HTTPS as a permitted protocol from absolutely any location. And we do that with the 0000 slash 0 syntax for the source address. And that looks good. So let's save this. And there's our new access control list for our subnet. And if we go over to our website and refresh, in our browser, we can see our site is back functional again, thanks to the modification of our access control list. In this nugget, you and I examined how we can filter with access control lists. Remember, this can be done at layer two, layer three, and access control lists can even be very sophisticated on certain devices and really have rules that look deep inside of packets when you are setting up the access control list. So you could even go as far as to block certain types of HTTP traffic, like maybe you want to block requests out to social media sites. These structures really do help us with defense in depth. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.